Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review for the Bundesligas Austria and Germany. We have one week in Austria to cover. This will be now a weekly thing, but for the Bundesliga I decided to go bi-weekly. A little bit of housekeeping up front. First off, I for the first time this weekend decided to record shorts to give you my thoughts on games that I've watched to kind of get this immediate uh, thing uh, off my chest. Maybe concentrate therefore more a little bit on development with developments within the league. Second of all, I hope I finally have fixed my microphone issues and you hear me very well. Uh, and third of all, the headline, yeah, winners wear pink, um, was a long time in the making. I was really thinking, what are the overarching themes? I wanted to make a video title that actually would encompass both leagues. Um, and then, yeah. I was it, I, I was pretty quickly then on the great comeback of Werder at Dortmund. Then I see the picture of pink, Lask one in pink. I think we can combine this. So uh, that's one thing, but I will talk about general trends in both uh, Bundesliga in just a sec. And then the pink also leads me to my wardrobe choice here. And probably this should be the first thing that I should touch in this video is uh, the fan protests by Lask because, you know, it's my team. So. I probably should talk about it. I will say, let's jump right in. Uh, in the Austrian Bundesliga, I said uh, the big talking point at this moment is definitely that Lask um, are tall, but obviously they have played only tough opponents. They have not played two, out two really good, good opponents. Were very victorious, are unbeaten, only a draw at Aus Austria and they are uh, leading uh, the table therefore. And every and while the game itself was a rather tense affair where little things could have swung the game in either way, it swung Lusk's way, who had a very Italian performance. And we'll talk about that when we go through the Bundesliga results. However, the big um, talking point among the fan base is that Lusk played in jerseys in two shades of pink and i personally have to say i have nothing against pink per se i actually think in a way it's a genius move to get the you know you sell a lot of uh those churches to female fans and both of my girls definitely want to have pink churches and my wife uh, also wants to have soon a pink jersey so i get that However, the protest is not really uh, is not against the color of pink. It is that pink is not one of the club's colors, and as a one-off, one might accept it. However, this pink is very much uh, related to the sponsor BWT. That's why uh, the fan base is going AWOL on it uh, so much that they missed the first 19 minutes and eight seconds of the game because of the founding uh, date and then uh, held up signs that, yeah, we want to have these jerseys as our uh, alternative with uh, white with black stripes for home, a black kit as an away, and then, um, you know, the pink, and they say they would like to see that. I, I actually wouldn't mind an all red Lusk jersey because that's something that's missing in my collection for sure. So yeah, I decided I do actually agree. It's getting a little bit much with the pink jersey. I think it's now the fourth season where there's a pink jersey. And while the first ones looked actually all right, now we're getting to a, to a, to a point where uh, the look is quite questionable. However, in the pink jerseys, they actually perform well in the league. So um, there you go. Now, going to the Bundesliga, uh, the German Bundesliga, it was really hard for me to find an overall theme. You know, with, I like to do it in two weeks um, chunks because that actually allows me to uh, really look at overarching trends. But to me, I mean, one trend for sure is that Bayer Leverkusen Le 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 have an awful start to, to, to the season. Now, two home, home games two shock losses and uh, Serana is already under serious, serious trouble. On the opposite side, I mean, how Bayern is playing around with the uh, league, yeah, it's impressive of onset, but it also doesn't look good for, for, for the league overall because you had such a great Saturday. And I said this in my short show, it's such a great Saturday. And then Bayern just goes to uh, Bochum and scores seven, 15 goals in the first uh, three games it's just ridiculous what they're doing and therefore yeah um, you basically can send the title already to Bayern uh, and then play for second place Dortmund also um, while they got a lucky win at Freiburg uh, what how they lost at home to Werder Bremen that's I think a big 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 story um, and I think 
we see the same frailties in Dortmund already that we that plagued them last season. But to me, the most positive thing, and I usually try to go for uh, positive headlines for my videos, the most positive thing are the two promoter teams, Schalke and Bremen, doing really, really, really well. And uh, Schalke now um, having two draws. Um, where arguably they probably should, should have had already one win. And in, in addition, Werder, Werder Bremen playing uh, actually quite nicely um, in Dortmund. Uh, at home at Stuttgart against Stuttgart was not so uh, great, but again, scoring a late, a late goal there to get a draw. And now again, a draw um, turning around the game in the 88th minute. Dortmund had a 2 nil lead that was not deserved. At that, that point, Werder played really, really well, and then Werder scored three twice in stoppage time to turn the game completely on its head and give Werder the deserved win. And I had already a feeling that this is a promotion class that actually might stay in. And for me, at the moment, I think both teams look so so enough that they will prevail in the Bundesliga. And then we have to see how it how how it's going forward. Um, I think. Bochum is in serious trouble and then we have to see who else might be in there. Let's go look at the results of uh, the past week in the Austrian Bundesliga. Um, the first result, of course, is the Vorarlberg Derby between Alltag and Lustena. Nominally, those are two different towns. However, they are closer together than the two Vienna teams. So this is a real derby and it was great atmosphere. It was atrocious weather. We had uh, really bad storms in the west and the south of Austria and the second half was basically a deluge there. Um, Alltag took an early lead um, and that um, Lustena could equalize, but the longer the game went on, the more Lustena uh, got through it and uh, got an in, in the end a deserve it. It deserved it and Alltag just couldn't hang on. A uh, little bit controversy surrounding the win of Salzburg against Klagenfurt, which was all but expected, but uh, in the lead up to the first goal, which came in the, only in the 51st minute, there was a clear uh, hand play by Werber in the um, box of Salzburg. It probably should have been a penalty. Wasn't even looked at. And so Salzburg runs and runs away 2 0 winners. I already said a little bit about uh, Sturm against Lask in a short video. Again, I think it was a very Italian performance by Lask. It was a very physical game. I think uh, defensively, Lask was very solid. Offensively, uh, basically not very, very, very present, only half chances. Sturm was defi had definitely more chances up until the goal. One could even say that. The shot by Nakamura, it was not the first shot on goal by Lask, but it was the first real chance. However, how passive the defense was by Sturm uh, played a role there as well. I was a little bit annoyed that, uh, yes, Sturm then had a few chances to equalize, but, you know, with a little bit um, more calm build, 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 build the play, uh, or a little bit more direct, uh, one could have probably even scored a second goal. But, you know, win is a win. Uh, it looks really, really good what Lask is doing at the, at the moment, and that to me is the most important. Um, and now the schedule eases up a little bit, which might be tricky as well. But you know, for me, having two Lask shirts in this video uh, was a no-brainer <laughs> in a way. Uh, I really cannot tell you how much I'm disappointed that Rapid had their game postponed because they're complaining already. They have a squad where they have every uh, position doubly. And they complain that there are too many games, too, 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 too many injuries. But what should Wolfsburg and Austria Wien say, who just played in Europe, uh, now they have to play each other and they have really tough games as well. So this doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, Reed losing at home to, to Tirol puts them in, in trouble as well. Um, Austria Wien was probably the second best in the first half, got a rather lucky equalizer, but then in, in the end deserved their win with a really good second half. Wolfsburg already in early trouble, they are a little bit like Leverkusen in Germany and yeah, one does not look forward to that. Uh, so if we look now at uh, the standings again, after five rounds, you can tell a little bit it's still Salzburg. It's just a point behind Heidelask is still very much the favorite there. Austria Lustenau is an amazing story. They're a promotional team. No promoted team after five rounds so far had 10 uh, points after the new in league format. So that is rather uh, remarkable. And Austria Vienna now minus three points given, but they're suddenly moving up to seventh, being last in the table so far. Um, in the expected regular season standings, you don't see many changes up, up top. On the bottom, it's a little bit more tight. Um, and it's also interesting. Sturm is just a slightly better written gets why they will just stay ahead of Lusk for now in the expected final standings, which I would see Austria Vienna making 
a return to the top six for now, where Austria Lustenau is also in there. Um, you see the upcoming games. I give it for you for two two rounds, but it might change. Um, Lask again has a late game. Uh, Rapid against Sturm is, of course, the big one there. This is one of the most atmospheric games in Austria. So uh, that's definitely one to watch for. Uh, and also the Austria duel. And then uh, the, the round after, although I hope uh, I will do a video in between, we see the upper Austrian derby and the Corinthian derby. Wolfsburg against Klagenfurt and Lask against Reed. Uh, are the standard games and maybe a West Derby between Salzburg and Tirol, although that's usually one. And a Styrian Derby, it's a Derby round and another Austria Derby between Austria, Vienna and Lustenau. So it's a quite exciting round, round seven. Going to Germany, um, here's a round uh, two that was uh, played uh, the previous week we, uh, weekend. I actually saw that Freiburg Dortmund game and I have to say Freiburg played really well. Uh, had Dortmund rather under control, took a deserved lead through Gregoric. Um, and then everything changed when um, Musa Mukoko came, came on the 70th minute. It was very much helped uh, by uh, the goalie when Vino Gittens makes a long range shot the goalie just needs to save. I mean, he pads it like that and it goes over him in, in the internet. And I remember t t t telling my wife, Oh, this game could turn, and that's exactly what happened. Mukoko then shortly after uh, makes it 2-2-1, then Wolf 3-1. Uh, a rather lucky win for Dortmund, and kind of a shaky start for Freiburg, but Freiburg actually looked good. Uh, Augsburg got a shock win at Lever Leverkusen, all down to goal to Gikiewicz, who saved like crazy. Uh, and then, you know, uh, with the only chance in the second half, they scored the winner. Uh, Hertha won one against Frankfurt. Frank Frankfurt having also a so-and-so star start to the season, but you know, after being beaten down by Bayern, you have to collect yourself. Uh, the Hoffenheim win against Bochum was remarkable because they were 2 0 down after 30 minutes, but then quickly get a goal back and in the end turn around and could even uh, afford to uh, miss a penalty in there. Leipzig against Köln. Um, Timo Werner, another goalkeeping mistake. Gives them the early lead, uh, the deeds can equalize, and then just, just before I have a red card for Soboschlei, that was not a red card to be honest, um, turns the tie towards uh, Köln, who have many chances, but still find themselves down to a goal through Nkunku, but they get then the equalizer to Guardiola and probably could have even won one, won, but maybe given that the red card was not quite right, I think the result was a fair one there. Uh, what else do we have? Werder score early for Phil Füllkrug. Stuttgart get into the game once Endo scores, but then Stuttgart is much better. Uh, scores uh, go ahead goal through Silas, has then few chances to uh, win it, and then with the only other, uh, the last ditch chance, Werder Bremen actually gets the equalizer. Um, rather lucky through a Burke in the 95th minute. Not the not of. Uh, no, not the only time he does that. Um, similar story for the other promoter team. Uh, Schalke again take the lead through, Sal through Salazar. Uh, very good in the first half. How in the second half? Um, Gladbach, who find themselves now under coach Farke, uh, turned the game around in short succession through Hofmann and Thuram, but it was not really, really deserved at that point. And so a Bulter penalty uh, gives Schalke a deserved point. Uh, Mainz Union, nil nil, not much to talk about. And Bayern, I was almost disappointed that it was only 2 nil against Wolfsburg on the return of uh, Nico Kovac to uh, the Allianz Arena. Now, this past weekend, uh, not much to tell about Gladbach against Hertha, except that the win was lucky with a penal penalty. Mainz winning 2 1 in Augsburg, I think, was also very well deserved. But I think the first one we really have to talk about is the shoddy performance by Leverkusen. Yes, they had a few chances and they missed a few, but. Um, they defending on the go-ahead goal by Christoph Baumgartner, who does it brilliantly. Uh, you know, primary play plays him and then he back he leaves it in. But they are two Hoffenheim players against seven Leverkusen players, and Leverkusen cannot defend that. Uh, and shortly after, Kramaric makes it then 2-0. Uh, it could have been three, but the goal was disallowed. Uh, do a foul in the Bilby Biller play. Leverkusen saw this as a lifeline, but never really threatened and in the, in, in the end it's a 3-0 and Leverkusen looks in deep deep trouble at this point uh, in a season where they really thought that they have a good chance. Um, I wish I could say more about Freiburg's win uh, in Stuttgart except that I know it's a southwest dirt to the river but from, for me I didn't pay too much attention to, to that. The Wolfsburg-Schalke match was also one that you didn't have to pay much attention but there were two remarkable scenes. First Schalke gets a penalty that uh, Terodde steps up it is saved 
uh, was not a good, good penalty, but it's retaken because uh, goalie was off of the line. Then he shoots the exact same penalty, exact same stupid penalty, and it is saved again. And then Wolfsburg actually thought they had also a goal scored. No, did not count. I think I jumped ahead. But, you know, the big one we all knew is Dortmund against Bremen. So let's talk about Dortmund against Bremen. Uh, yeah, I skipped that one. Uh, I said it already in the preamble, an absolutely nuts game. Bremen played really well. What they didn't do the week before, they played there. They were well in the game. We can discuss the jerseys, which I still do not like. Uh, Dortmund was lucky to take a 1-0 through Brandt and then when they made a 2-0 through Guerrero, you really thought, yeah, um, this was a routine win for Dortmund, they are just a little bit more clever than Werder. Boo, no, boo-hoo. Uh, much of talk is uh, given, of course, that um, Süle was playing and in defense not so good. But still, Buchanan in the 89th gives them the goal back, then Schmidt Head, head, has in a 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, and at this point it's already the crazy escape by Bremen, who never thought that they would get anything. And then they were just going back and forth between Stuttgart and Freiburg and then going back to Dortmund. And the commentator is a little bit saying, yeah, this is what happened, blah, blah, blah. And you see Berg running free on goal, making it 3-2. It was absolutely nuts. This was one of the greatest comebacks that I, I have seen. And what, what makes it even sweeter is that it actually was deserved, because Dortmund did not play well. So yeah, uh, that to me was uh, the game of the weekend in all of these uh, uh, leagues. Uh, Union 2-1 over Leipzig, I didn't see that because I was focusing on Lusk, but uh, Union is for is at home for real. As, as we see, they will have a very big opponent at home soon as well. But Siba Gio and Becco already in the first first seven, only a late really Orban goal. Uh, I actually saw the Frankfurt against Köln, uh, the second half. Um, it was a rather level of a game, but Frankfurt had, thought they had the edge, especially when, when they got the goal through Kamada, a free kick that Hector kind of deflected over the goalie. Uh, and then they just don't clear the ball and Thielmann from far out puts it in. And, you know, Kern bounced back from their loss at home in the U U Europa League, while Frankfurt kind of still having a shaky start. And uh, Bochum, Bayern... All seven, I didn't see it, honestly. Yeah, Sane, Mane, all my, you know, now they play together. You remember uh, when they were at City and Liverpool, how I always mix, mix it up, now it was even worse. But, you know, I can't even say, Sane, Mane, they always score. The Licht even scored, Coman scored, Mane scores too. Uh, it uh, absolute destruction, and it's ridiculous. Maybe they will come down, but at the moment, I think Bayern is toying with the league, and uh, yeah. Let's see how they will do. Um, I give you here the full standing so, so far, as, as, as I said. Um, we cannot tell much uh, as well, except that if you look at the adjusters and I look at the bars, you see that uh, there are some positives, but the real negatives are Leipzig and Lever Leverkusen, who thought they could be challengers for a Champions League spot. Looks rather uh, tough. If you look at the expected sta standings, Bayern, Bayern, Bayern. Dortmund is still in second place, but I have my doubts at the moment. But it's always for Leipzig and Leverkusen. because I think uh, it could be a shakeup of the top four, especially I'm looking at Union Berlin, who have been improving. And at the moment, both promoted teams will stay out of trouble. Augsburg, Bochum might be in early trouble already. Here, the upcoming two rounds, because I'm planning to do the next video on the German Pons League in two um, weeks. Bayern, Gladbach... I'm looking a little bit interested. Kurt Stuttgart uh, and Werder Bremen Frankfurt are also uh, four teams that I really like now in the Bundesliga. I don't like them playing against each other. Similar goes actually for Schalke against Union. I really want to see how Leverkusen will do in Mainz and Dortmund just needs to get something uh, at Hertha. Uh, and then the week after, Union Bayern is one that I think you should already circle in the calendar. And again, a uh, duel between teams I like within Stuttgart and Schalke. Uh, Frankfurt Leipzig could be a very very interesting one so yeah that's it from me from the Bundesliga please let me know and like this video if you did enjoy it drop a line below if you want to add anything to what I'm saying here and I will talk to you soon in another video bye hey there I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my 
Soccer Universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye.